I just bought this camera right here on eBay for $1,800. And it just so happens to be on the Netflix approved cinema cameras list, which officially makes this the cheapest Netflix approved cinema camera by a long shot. All right, so in just a few minutes, I'm gonna go over what that camera is, how I bought it, uh, I'm gonna show some footage I shot with it, all that stuff in just a few minutes. But first, I really wanna talk about what exactly does it mean to be a Netflix approved cinema camera? What cameras are on that list? And does it really matter? All right, so I'm here on Netflix's official website right now, looking at their approved camera list. Uh, so these are all the brands right here, and it shows all the cameras for each brand that are approved. We'll go over that in just a second. And then it goes over all these capture requirements, uh, use of non-approved cameras, technical considerations, all that stuff. So it has a whole bunch of requirements that you need to follow if you wanna be on Netflix. So right here it says, 90% of the total runtime of a final program should be captured on approved cameras. For nonfiction content, this may be more flexible. Any exceptions must be discussed with a Netflix product lead. So it's basically saying that 90% of the runtime of your film, you know, your documentary, your TV show, whatever you're gonna put on Netflix, must be recorded with these approved cameras. So at first that might seem kind of crazy. I mean, there's this kind of short list of cameras that you have to use for anything that goes on Netflix. But it's actually a little different than that. So this list is only for Netflix original series or movies. So if you've ever watched a TV show or movie on Netflix and like in the beginning of it or somewhere it says Netflix original on it, that is what this list is for. So this list isn't just like any movie or TV show that goes on Netflix had to have been recorded with these because obviously there's movies and TV shows on Netflix from like the 70s and 80s where none of these cameras even existed back then. So like I said, this list is only if you're gonna be making Netflix original content specifically for Netflix, then you have to follow all these rules and this huge list of you know, specifications and approved cameras and all that. And it seems like so many people look at this list and say, oh my gosh, if this camera isn't on it, it's a stupid camera, it sucks. You can't even record good films with it because it's not Netflix approved. And so it seems like so many people freak out if a camera isn't on the Netflix approved cameras list because you know they think it's just not good quality or not good enough to be Netflix approved. That's not the case. I mean, there's a bunch of cameras that definitely meet the quality of these other cameras that aren't on the list. And I'm guessing the reason that there isn't more cameras on this list is because of course, Netflix has to put time and money and energy into researching these cameras, you know, testing them, finding out the specifications they need, and if those cameras work. So for example, right here I have a Zcam S6. This is a 6K Super 35 sensor cinema camera. It has the exact same size sensor as the one I got over there that's Netflix approved. Uh, it records 6K video, which that one doesn't. It's basically an all around better camera, but this isn't on the Netflix approved cameras list. And so I'm pretty sure the reason why cameras like this and a bunch of other cameras that are definitely good enough to be on the list, but just aren't on it, is because Netflix has to put time, energy, and money into researching these cameras. And you know, they don't wanna put in all that time and money and research into these not as popular cameras that less people are gonna use over these other cameras that are really more standard, high production value cameras that a bunch of people use all the time. So my guess is it's just really a balancing act. You know, Netflix is obviously going to look at the highest end cameras, you know, the Aries and the Reds, and get those approved on the list because so many professionals use those cameras. But on the other end, something like a Z cam, a lot of people use these cameras, you know, a lot of freelance filmmakers because they're good budget cameras but not that many real productions use these Zcam cameras. And so Netflix would have to put so much time and energy and money into approving these for their Netflix list for like five to 10 people to actually make a Netflix original film or TV show with these cameras. So it just wouldn't be worth it for them to put all that time and energy into it for just so few people to actually use these. Because if we're being honest, uh, if you have a huge budget, which you know most Netflix original movies that have A-list celebrity actors, they're gonna have these insane budgets. Most film production companies or you know whoever we're talking about that decides which camera to use, they're just gonna go straight for the Ari Alexa or straight for the Red. You know they're gonna go straight for those highest end cinema cameras and not really think about these lower budget, uh, lower end ones that all these freelance filmmakers use. Because let's be honest, if you have a pretty much unlimited budget like a lot of these films have, you're probably just gonna pick an Ari Alexa or a Red or just one of those really high end proven cinema cameras that you know almost everybody uses for high budget films like that. 
All right, so I kind of ranted on there for a while, but is this list important to you? Probably not unless you're gonna be filming a Netflix original series or movie, which a very small percentage of you viewing this probably are. But like I said, this does not mean that you can't get a film or a show on Netflix if you don't use these. So you can still create a film with any camera and get it approved to be on Netflix. So most of the people that look at this list and hope that you know the camera they have gets on the list or wanna buy a camera that's on it, it's really not that big of a deal and I honestly wouldn't even consider looking at it or I wouldn't let this push you to buy a certain camera versus a different camera because this is just, it's not that important, honestly. At the end of the day, this is just a list for Netflix originals. So few people are really gonna care about this list and really need to look at it and decide what camera they want based on it that it really just doesn't matter for 98% of other people. But anyways, let's go ahead and look over this list, see what cameras are on here, and then I'll show you the one that I got, which is the cheapest camera on the Netflix approved cinema camera list. So first of all, we have Ari. Now these are gonna be basically the most expensive ones on this list. Of course, you have the Ari Alexa LF, the Ari Alexa Mini LF, and then the Ari Alexa 65. The Ari Alexa 65 is literally, I'm pretty sure the best cinema camera in the world. Like it's unbelievable. It has a large format sensor, it shoots 6K. I don't think you can even buy this camera. I think it's only available for rental from Ari directly. Like I said, this is arguably the best cinema camera in the world. The Ari's totally not even in the same league as a lot of these other cameras on here. And that's not to say these other cameras or any camera can't shoot amazing video. Ari Alexa's are just unbelievable. So next up we have Canon. This is getting more into the budget territory. So I'm pretty sure the cheapest one of these Canon cameras is gonna be the C300 Mark II. So that's getting pretty old at this point. Uh, the C300 Mark III just came out about a year ago. The C300 Mark II is definitely a couple years old at this point. And I think you can get them used for under $5,000. Let's check eBay real quick. Can the C300 Mark II, $4,000 or best offer. Okay, so let's go ahead and short, sort by lowest price. By now for the, yeah, so it looks like $4,000 for C300 Mark II. That's that's getting pretty good. I mean, compared to, you know, a 60 or $100,000 Ari Alexa or RED camera, but $4,000 is not a bad price for a Netflix approved cinema camera. And so that's gonna be the cheapest Canon cinema camera on here. Of course, the Canon C70 is a new one that just got added to this list and actually just came out. And I think that's about $6,000. So it's a brand new camera. It's like, you know, probably five years newer than a C300 Mark II um, for, you know, $1,000, $2,000 more. And so that's another, budget-ish, I still don't want to say budget, but you know, one of the more budget cameras on this list and it just came out. Next up, Panasonic. Uh, there's of course the Vericams, which are their highest end cinema cameras. Those are gonna be way out of any sort of budget price range. However, on this list is another new camera that just came out recently, which is the Panasonic VGH1. So this right here is actually the cheapest new cinema camera on this list. This camera is $2,000. Compared to any other camera on this list is an absolute steal. And it's a tiny camera. It's essentially Panasonic's version of the Z-cams. So this right here is the cheapest camera on this list if you're talking about buying new. However, the one that I got is cheaper than this by a couple hundred dollars. So I'm not gonna call the BGH one the cheapest Netflix group cinema camera because obviously used is always an option. Next up we have the Reds. These are all gonna be way above that $2,000 or $1,800 price range. Um, but there's a whole list of Reds here. There's actually kind of a crazy amount on here. Next up Panavision, uh, that's another just insane camera, way out of any sort of budget price range. And then we have Sony. So Sony Venice, insane camera, way out of the price range. Sony FX9, that's starting to get down there. F55, F65, um, all these right here. The Sonys are probably gonna be some of the cheaper ones on this list. And then we have Black Magic. So the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and 6K actually aren't on this list. And those are two cameras that definitely create enough quality. They definitely should be um, but they're not on this list right now. And so that's the full list of Netflix approved cinema cameras. Like I said, I'm sure there's thousands of cameras that produce just as good or better quality than a lot of these cameras that aren't on the list. However, now it's time to talk about 
the cheapest Netflix approved cinema camera in the world. The one that I just got for $1,800. This right here is the Sony FS7 Mark I cinema camera. So I got this camera for $1,800, which is well below the average used price and an insane amount below the new price of this camera. And so the Sony FS7 isn't the cheapest new cinema camera, and I actually don't even think you can buy it new anymore. However, the closest you can get to it is on like Adorama.com. The refurbished price is I think six or $7,000 still. So by far it is not the cheapest camera you can get on that list buying new or you know refurbished from a reputable dealer. And even when we talk about the average use prices on eBay, this camera goes for closer to three to $4,000. However, if you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I pretty much scour the internet on a daily basis to find the most insane deals possible. I actually made a video a while back about the cheapest cinema camera in the world, which I got a Sony FS100 for $375, which is still an unbelievable deal for that camera. I actually think the value went up a little bit since then. But either way, I pretty much scour the internet on a daily basis looking for just unbelievable, insane deals. And that is exactly what I found with this FS7. So this camera was up for sale on eBay for I think $2,000 or a little over $2,000, which is still a crazy deal for it. But when I saw it on there, I shot over an offer for $1,800 just to see what would happen. And for some reason they accepted it which was unbelievable. Now the only issue with that is that there was no returns accepted. This is on eBay, so you really never know exactly what you're gonna get. This camera also didn't have the original monitor with it or any monitor with it or the side handle or a battery or an SD card. It was just pretty much the body and the top handle, which also means there was no photos of it actually turned on and being used. And so it was a little bit of a sketchy thing. Uh, you know, obviously on eBay, you never really know exactly what you're gonna get. However, eBay has a really good buyer protection program, so if it didn't work, like it said it did, then obviously I could be able to get my refund or return it or figure something out. So I went with it, I paid for it, I waited for it. And as soon as I got the camera, I ordered up a cheap battery on Amazon for it. And then I already had a monitor sitting around and a side handle and all that. So I pretty much built up the rig a little bit, turned it on, and it worked just fine. And the other crazy part about this is it didn't say on the listing how many hours this camera has, which is another thing I was worried about. You know, if it had like thousands of hours and you know, went through years and years of use and abuse, you know, you can just never really be sure with anything like that. However, when I booted this camera up, I looked at the hour meter and I was pretty much blown away. This camera has 70 hours on it, which is unbelievably low amount of hours. For a camera that came out in 2014, that's just, it's unbelievable. So this thing is almost new. There's not really any wear or tear on the body. Uh, it's basically a new camera, which is unbelievable for $1,800, the cheapest Netflix approved cinema camera. And I really don't know if I'll ever come by anything that was this good of a deal ever again. And so that is pretty much the story of the cheapest Netflix approved cinema camera. Now, will I be filming a Netflix original movie or TV show with this camera? Probably not. Hopefully eventually, technically I can now, which you know, kind of has a good feeling to it. Like I said, you shouldn't worry about that and you should never look at it as you know, I only wanna buy this camera if it's Netflix approved, but it does really just give you that kind of good feeling knowing that I can film a Netflix original movie with that camera right behind me. It's kind of crazy, especially for getting it less than $2,000. I mean, that's like the price of a Sony a7 III, which is a prosumer mirrorless camera that's not even specifically meant for video. But anyways, here's some footage I shot with this FS7 with the Netflix approved codec and resolution, everything like that. I guess technically this footage that I shot could be on Netflix. I'm definitely not that talented yet, but technically it could be on Netflix. So enjoy the footage.
wraps up this video of how I got the cheapest Netflix approved cinema camera. I kind of went on a lot longer than I thought it would. So if you're still watching this, definitely let me know in the comments if you made it this far in the video. Also definitely go down and hit the like button and subscribe if you're interested in budget cameras and budget lenses and all that type of stuff. And that wraps this video up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.